I'm Ronnie Vias. Welcome to TCM, although it's really welcome to being in front of the camera uh, on, on TCM. Yeah, thank you for having me on this side of the camera. Uh, d tell everybody uh, what you do. So I'm a programmer, so I help pick the movies that go on air. Programmer, you're not like a code programmer. You, you, not you at all. You program the movies. Mm -hmm. uh, More like a curator than a programmer. All right. So we're here to talk about the idea of America for the next three Friday nights, speaking with uh, first-generation immigrants, to uh, get their sense of how the movies uh, helped form their impression uh, of America. Uh, this was your idea, this bit of programming. What what, what inspired it? My dad was the inspiration for this. Uh, growing up, both my parents were born and raised in Africa, and so I've always had sort of an interesting lineage to get to the United States. And he would always tell me stories about his idyllic life there, but I always wanted to know more about what he thought of America, uh, what were his favorite movies, and what inspired him to move to this country. Did he always want to come to the United States? He actually did not. He had such a lovely life in Nairobi. He was in a wealthy family. They had a successful business. America always felt like a country to visit, but not necessarily one he wanted to actually immigrate to. What's your father's name? Sergeant First Class uh, JBS. We wanted him to come, and he's a huge TCM fan. Huge TCM fan. Uh, why, why is he not here? He's always been more on the quiet side. He's rather a listener than a talker. So he thought I could do him justice and tell his story instead. He has a soldier's stoicism. Truly. How do you get from Nairobi to the United States? It's a very interesting story. So born and raised in Nairobi, he lived there until he was 17. At that time he was born, Kenya was under British rule. And so he was considered a British subject. He then moved to India for a year, but because he was considered a British citizen and not an Indian citizen, he couldn't enroll in school there. And so after kind of putzing around for a bit um, and returning back to Kenya, there was a lot of political unrest. And at the time, it wasn't quite safe to stay in Kenya. So his father got the idea to finally move to the States and see what they could become there. Um, he moved to Detroit, Michigan, and he enlisted in the U.S. Army without telling his parents. Wow, enlisted in the Army, didn't tell his parents. What, what was he thinking? I'm not sure if he was. I think he just grew up watching John Wayne movies and Audie Murphy movies, which are his absolute favorite. He idolized the military. He idolized sort of American patriotism, and he wanted nothing more than to be able to provide for his own siblings, much like Audie Murphy did. The movie you and I suspect your father uh, have chosen to, to kick off uh, this bit of programming on TCM is an Audie Murphy film to Helen Back. It's Audie Murphy's story. So did movies influence your father's impression of America as a kid in Kenya? Did he get to see them uh, then or did he not start watching movies until he got to Detroit? It did. So growing up in Kenya, movies were kind of a hot commodity. In his family, they weren't a family affair. His parents tended to watch more religious movies where he would save up his allowance to go see Western movies. A lot of them at the time were British imports, but every now and then he would get a U.S. red-blooded American movie and he was thrilled. He also loved watching TV shows. So he watched a lot of uh, Bonanza and Bewitched and I Dream of Jeannie. And growing up, he thought America actually had witches and genies, and there are always fights at the gun corrals every weekend. If so much of your father's impression of the United States was formed by John Wayne movies, Audie Murphy movies, television shows like Bonanza and I Dream of Genie, uh, was there a culture shock when he came and, and realized that hey, we don't we don't have genies and, and, and Detroit is not uh, uh, was not depicted in, in Audie Murphy and James, John Wayne movies? There was. I think he couldn't believe, first of all, how cold Detroit was. Um, it's so different from his upbringing. And it made him really miss Kenya, I think. I think he was more excited to join the army so he could travel the world. He fought in Gulf War. He fought in the Iraq War. He spent years in South Korea, years in Afghanistan. So most of my upbringing, he was sort of gone for most of the year. And he would come back for two weeks for uh, his time off. I think if he still had the energy, he would still want to keep being deployed. How long did your father uh, serve in the in the military? He served for 20 years. And then retired? Mm -hmm. So 20 years in the military, and now how long in the United States? 30 years. So 30 years uh, in, in the country, uh, 20 years in the military. Uh, give me a sense of like what your dad loves about Audie Murphy. I think he just wants to be Audie Murphy, and he loves the idea of someone so young accomplishing so much. And granted, it's in a movie, but it looks so effortless. And you'll see in the film, this is Audie Murphy as Audie Murphy making this a rather exceptional story. And just about all of what you see, the heroic exploits, uh, are as they happen. What's great is the same patch that Audie has, my dad has. They ended up in the same infantry division. Which is the? 
B Company, 1st Division, 15th Infantry Regiment. All right, Hamrani, thanks very much. Let's watch the movie now. Here it is from 1955. Audie Murphy, Into Hell and Back. Welcome back. Joined once again by Hamrani V.S., who's a programmer here at TCM and came up with this uh, idea that we have for tonight and the two Fridays to follow, uh, the idea of America, talking to uh, first and second generation immigrants uh, about how movies form their impression of, of the United States. This was uh, to Helen Back we just saw with Audie Murphy uh, as Audie Murphy, your father, 20 years in the Army. He picked this movie. He did, one of his absolute favorites. What other movies influenced your father? He also loves Hitari because that was mm -hmm. shot on location in Nairobi. And really anything with John Wayne, also Kelly's Heroes, anything with Clint Eastwood. He just loved sort of the rough and tumble Western man. Your dad is a guy. Yeah, he's yeah. a red-blooded American. <laughs> and uh, we wanted him to come in, uh, uh, but he wouldn't do it. Uh, just, I mean, now I mean like wouldn't do it like obstinate, <laughs> but it's not his thing, right? No. Yeah. He's more of a behind the scenes man. What was his uh, impression of this idea of yours? I mean, obviously this this, this came from uh, your love, respect, admiration for your father mm -hmm. that you thought this would be a good idea. How did he respond? I think he found it a little odd. I think he thought, <laughs> why does anyone want to hear my story? I'm right. just another foot soldier. I, right, but the idea of telling immigrant stories and how the movies informed them, what did he think of that? That his daughter was sort of inspired by him and wanted to do this. I think he was a little touched by it, but again, he's such a man of few words, he would never really show it, but he would go, huh, that's interesting, I guess. <laughs> that's, what he, that's what he gives you. Yeah. And now, is that a source of uh, frustration for you? That there's not a little more uh, emotion coming from your father, or are you reconciled to that? No, I've reconciled to that. Just hearing so much of his upbringing, I sort of know what he's been through, and so I don't hold anything against him in terms of not showing too much emotion. <laughs> So as a programmer here at TCM, uh, constantly uh, uh, putting together nights of the movies that we show on, on a regular basis, um, what have you found just about the way that you look at so many of these classic movies as opposed to the way that people who are, you know, third, fourth generation immigrants who, who, who don't have your experience, how do you look at these classic movies differently? I look at them through the size of a nostalgia that I've never experienced and also seeing these are what my parents watched growing up. And even to them, it's still this sort of distant kind of hopeful idea for them. I love that idea, the nostalgia that you never experienced. Uh, you know, you, you, you grew up here in the United States, but with immigrant parents. And I, I'm so what you're seeing, right, what we think of as nostalgia, because it's, you know, what my uh, parents either loved or what my parents, how they lived, what they looked like. You don't have that, but you still feel that, that pull. I do, and it's something I think they also were yearning for because even when they are watching, it's not at all their lived experience either. Because if you think about it, movies at the time that were showing those parts of the world weren't necessarily in the best light. And so I think they always gravitated towards these more American movies to see what their life could look like in a different way. Is your parents' outlook on the world and on the United States, is it uh, dramatically different than many of the people who you come across who don't share that experience? I think so, especially many of the Indian Americans I've come across. My family's not your typical Indian American family in the sense that my dad was an American soldier. And to this day, I've never met another Indian American U.S. soldier. And so their perspective has really shaped who I am and who my siblings are because we've always had this sort of global outlook on things from a very young age, just based on their family history. I'm Ronnie. Thanks very much. This was a great idea. And thanks to your father, too. Thank you. Stay with us. We have more of the idea of America ahead. Janet Lee and Robert Mitchum are up next with Holiday Affair. <laughs> 